the good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. But if it's today in the gospel, Jesus challenges us to work for the things that lead to eternal life, not the things that are perishable. At times we find ourselves moving more towards those things that can give us temporal satisfaction rather than leading to eternal life. And so for those times of temptation, let us ask our God and each other for forgiveness and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through a most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen was filled with grace and power and began to work miracles and great signs among the people. But then certain people came forward to debate with Stephen, some from Cyrene and Alexandria, who were members of the synagogue called the Synagogue of Freedmen, and others from Cilicia and Asia. They found they could not get the better of him because of his wisdom, and because it was the Spirit that prompted what he said. So they procured some men to say, we heard him using blasphemous language against Moses and against God, having in this way turned the people against him, as well as the elders and scribes. They took Stephen by surprise and arrested him and brought him before the Sanhedrin there they put up false witnesses to say, This man is always making speeches against this holy place and the law. We have heard him say that Jesus the Nazarene is going to destroy this place and alter the traditions that Moses handed down to us. The members of the Sanhedrin all looked intently at Stephen, and his face appeared to them like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who walk in the way of the Lord. Though princes sit plotting against me, I ponder on your statutes. Your will is my delight. Your statutes are my counselors. Blessed are they who walk in the way of the Lord. I declared my ways and you answered. Teach me your statutes. Make me grasp the way of your precepts and I will muse on your wonders. Blessed are they who walk in the way of the Lord. Keep me from the way of error and teach me your law. I have chosen the way of truth. 
with your decrees before me. Blessed are they who walk in the way of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. No one lives on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking on the water. Next day, the crowds that had stayed on the other side saw that only one boat had been there, and that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that the disciples had set off by themselves. Other boats, however, had put in from Tiberias, near the place where the bread had been eaten. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into those boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen the signs but because you have had all the bread you want to eat. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life, the kind of food the Son of Man is offering you. For on him the Father, God himself, has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer, This is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, this coming week we hear from perhaps one of the most challenging chapters of John's Gospel, the sixth chapter that speaks of Jesus as the bread of life. We find that this chapter begins with Jesus feeding the 5,000, with them having that satisfaction of being fed. And they follow Jesus simply because they want more of this bread echoing something of what happened to the chosen people in the desert when Moses fed them manna from, the, from, the, uh, from heaven. But Jesus slowly brings them to realize that it's not this bread that they should be seeking, but rather the bread of life, the bread of life that is he himself. And he will challenge them to a point where many of them simply leave him and think that this is intolerable language. And Jesus does not mince his words, does not tell them to come back for him to water down his doctrine. It becomes for us something of what we heard in our gospel yesterday, where the disciples recognized him at the breaking of bread, the house at Emmaus. We have this great gift of the Eucharist given to us each day. And in these times, these last few weeks, it's become an even more precious gift. So let's Meditate on the greatness of this gift, the gift of the body and blood of Christ, to nourish us, the gift that brings us eternal life here and now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Satisfy the hunger of the heart and of the spirit. So we bring these needs before him. That the church may awaken in her members a hunger and thirst for the bread of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may realize that the longings of the heart cannot be satisfied by the pursuit of worldly success or material comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who spend their time uselessly searching for joy and happiness in the wrong way may find the right direction in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may receive comfort and attention from those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that those who have died may be united with Christ in the new life of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now turn to Our Lady of Lords, Patroness of the Sick. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure that you will provide, so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, a mother of divine love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings, and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Our Lady of Lords, Patroness of the Sick, pray, pray for, for us. us. Almighty Father, you have given us the bread from heaven as food on our pilgrim journey. Guide our steps in the ways of justice and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine, a work of human hands have become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jewful, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink, drink this, this cup, cup, we proclaim your, your death, O Lord, until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, you are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in union in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, not I'm not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Shall be healed. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of its saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Masses Ender, let us now go in love and in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.